find out the diameter of flywheel and draw the turning moment diagram when driving torque is constant and load torque is variable. Given question, the load cycle for a machine consists of three parts. First, the torque is constant at 10 Nm during theta is equal to 0 to pi radians. Second, torque is constant at 120 Nm during theta is equal to pi to 3 pi by 2 radians. Third, torque is constant at 10 Nm during theta is equal to 3 pi by 2 to 2 pi radians. The machine is driven by constant torque electric motor. The mean speed is 500 rpm while the coefficient of fluctuation of speed is 0.05. Determine the outer diameter of the flywheel. If it is made of solid circular disc of 0.025 meter width, the material used is steel with density of 7800 kg per meter cube. Flywheel is mounted in between source motor and load machine. As the energy is absorbed from the source motor, flywheel speed increases. And when the energy is released to the load machine, flywheel speed decreases. We have to first draw the turning moment diagram for the source motor as well as load machine. We will move to the given data. So the load cycle for machine is mentioned. So torque in Newton meter and theta in radians is given. Now to draw the turning moment diagram for the load machine, we have to plot the theta that is the crank angle in radians on the horizontal line and torque in Newton meter or in the vertical line. So we have to take some suitable scale. So we will take one particular scale. So we can take here the uh, distance, equal distance, 1 cm, 2 cm as per the space available and we will plot the angle. 0 to pi by 2, then pi by 2 plus pi by 2 that is pi, then pi plus pi by 2 that is 3 pi by 2 and then 3 pi by 2 plus pi by 2 which is equal to 2 pi. And on vertical line again we will take some suitable scale and we will plot here the number 10 as well as 120. Now torque 10 Newton meter for angle 0 to pi. So we have to draw the line. So how to draw the line? So for 10 Newton meter, so I will draw horizontal line up to this angle pi. Then next torque 120 Newton meter angle is pi to 3 pi by 2. So here is 120. So at this pi I will draw one vertical line and we will extend this line 120 up to this angle 3 pi by 2. Then next for 10 Newton meter, this 3 pi by 2 to 2 pi. So again we will extend the line for this 10 Newton meter and here I will finish this 2 pi. Now we will move to the source motor. So how to draw the turning moment diagram. Now information mentioned about the source motor is driving torque is constant. And here if we observe load torque then it is variable because, because it varies from this 10 Newton meter for up to this 120 Newton meter. So here this torque remain constant. So we have one formula that we will apply and we will find out this constant driving torque. So area under T theta diagram for source motor is equal to area under T theta diagram for the load machine. So how we can draw this T theta diagram for the constant torque. So this torque T is constant. So we have to extend one horizontal line up to this crank angle 2 pi. So the shape will be in this form. So this torque, driving torque, I can say input torque as a Ti and here this load machine torque that is the output torque as a To. Now how to find out area under this diagram? So this is in the form of rectangle. So area Ti multiplied by 2 pi which is equal to area under the T theta diagram for load machine. So again I will make here one construction line in the form of dot. So here this is the form of rectangle. So I can say that 10 multiplied by pi plus 
Now here this is again in the form of rectangle. So this gap is 3 pi by 2 minus pi. That is pi by 2. So pi by 2 multiplied by 120. Plus again this is in the form of rectangle. So pi by 2 multiplied by 10. So we have to solve this. So here 120 by 2 that is 60 into pi plus 5 into pi. So pi we can take common then here 10 plus 60 plus 5 that is 75. So ti into 2 pi is equal to 75 into pi. So value of ti is equal to because this pi pi is getting cancelled. ti is equal to 37.5 newton meter. So what is this value of ti? So I have to mention here 37.5. Newton meter. So here we will just write the number that is 37.5. So the turning moment diagram for the source motor is also getting completed. Now we have to draw here third diagram superimposing source motor turning moment diagram as well as load machine diagram. So how to superimpose this? So we have to first draw this turning moment diagram for load machine so for that I will place here the numbers that is we will take some suitable scale here will be 10 and then here will be 37 here will be 120 now here up to pi there is 10 so I will take here 37.5 and here 120 so for this 10 uh, newton meter we have to extend the line up to pi then from pi to 3 pi by 2 we have to again draw one line for this 120 and then we have to continue up to 2 pi. Now we have to superimpose the two diagrams. So again we will draw here the turning moment diagram for the source motor. So I will use the different color marker. So we have to just extend this 37.5. From this superimposing turning moment diagram we will find out the maximum fluctuation of energy. Now at the crank angle 0 that is at point A we will consider the energy in flywheel is equal to E. Now if we observe this diagram then crank angle in between 0 to pi the torque developed in source motor that is equal to 37.5 but at the same time the load machine requirement torque that is equal to 10 newton meter. So the remaining energy that is getting supplied in the flywheel and I will show here with the help of dash. Now this energy we will say E1 and this amount of energy is stored in the flywheel. So we have to find out what is this amount of energy stored. So this horizontal distance is equal to pi and vertical distance 37.5 minus 10. So what is the total energy in the flywheel at point B? So this energy E plus E1 and E plus now E1 is equal to 37.5 minus 10 pi. So when we solve this then E plus 27.5 pi. So this amount of energy in the flywheel at point B. Now what is happening next pi by 2 crank angle. So in between this pi and 3 pi by 2 if we observe here the requirement in the load machine that is equal to 120 newton meter. So again the energy is released to the load machine from the flywheel. So what is this amount of energy? So I will show here with the help of dash line. So energy release that is equal to E2. So how to find out this E2? So vertical distance 120 minus 37.5 and horizontal distance 3 pi by 2 minus pi that is pi by 2. So again at this point C how to find out the energy in flywheel? 
that is we will take E plus E1 and this energy is released so we have to take here the negative sign so minus E2 so instead of E2 we will write here 120 minus 37.5 multiplied by pi by 2 so when we solve this so here E1 value is 27.5 pi so I will uh, underline here this is the value of E1 so we have to put the same value of E1 and now here value of E2 we have to find out this so here this uh, if we solve this then we will get E minus 13.75 pi so here value of E1 minus E2 is equal to minus 13.75 pi so this is the value now we will move next that is at point D. So how to find out the energy at point D? So if we observe the torque developed by the source motor 37.5 but at the same time in between this 3 pi by 2 to 2 pi crank angle requirement is equal to 10 Newton meter only. So again this energy E3 is getting stored in the flywheel. So we have to show this energy E3. So at point D how to find out this. So energy at point D is equal to E plus E1 minus E2 plus E3. And for this E3 vertical distance 37.5 minus 10 and horizontal distance pi by 2. So we have to calculate this. So, so at the same time we have to put the same value that is E1 minus E2 is having minus 13.75 pi. So we will plot the same value. So I will underline this. So for this we have to take the same value. So E minus 13.75 pi plus we have to put the value of E3. So when we solve this then here minus 13.75 pi plus here also 13.75 pi. So this is these two getting cancelled and remaining value that is equal to E. Now we will calculate the maximum fluctuation of energy. Now we have to observe at each point what is the energy. So at point A it is E, at point B it is E plus 27.5 and C it is E minus 13.75. 30, so maximum fluctuation of energy that means we have to select the maximum energy and minimum energy. So at point B it is E plus 27.5. So here I will make the bracket and this is the maximum energy. So this is the maximum energy. And at point C it is E minus 13.75 pi. So this is the minimum energy. Now when we take the difference in between this maximum and minimum then we will get the maximum fluctuation of energy. So when we solve this then we will get 41.25 pi and unit is joule. To find out the diameter of flywheel we have to use the formula delta E max that is the maximum fluctuation of energy is equal to I omega square Cs where I is the moment of inertia omega angular velocity and c is coefficient of fluctuation of speed and that is mentioned in the question so we will use here so delta e max we have calculated 41.25 pi is equal to i now angular velocity so speed is mentioned so we will use here 2 pi n by 60 because n is 500 and we will put here the value bracket square into coefficient of fluctuation of speed 0.05 so when we put all the values then we will get the value of I 0.9454 kilogram meter square. So this is the mass moment of inertia of the flywheel. So now flywheel is of the type solid disc flywheel. So for this solid disc flywheel moment of inertia is equal to m r square by 2. So we will take here m. So here mass is not mentioned. But the material is mentioned that is steel and for that steel what is the density? So density 7800 kilogram per meter cube. Now thickness is also given. So we have to use the given thickness in meter. And we will take the formula for M as 
pi r square b into rho. So pi r square that means we have to use area for this solid disk. B is the thickness and rho is the density. So this is we have to replace instead of m and here r square by 2 we have to take as it is. So if we observe this r square and r square will become r raised to 4 and we will put the other values for b that is thickness as well as density and then we will get the value of r and that is equal to 235.7 millimeter. So we will consider this as a 236 millimeter. And then what is the diameter? So diameter is equal to 2 times of this radius r. So d is equal to 472 millimeter and this is the answer.